Hello everyone, so welcome to this module in the course Explosions with Maya and Fume Effects. So in this scene we've got this chopper that's going to get blasted out of the air and it's going to crash down to the ground and finally end with a big explosion. So we're going to set up a few different explosions here and we're going to break these up into different modules. So the first explosion will be, we'll have a lot of debris shooting off and different directions with the main hit kind of a central and then the second module we're going to have more of some extra trailing debris and smoke and then by the third module we're going to create a more fuel driven explosion and a bunch of different particle setups to get a more interesting dynamic and in the later modules we will light it and render it up so let's just get right to it so in this first lesson we will concentrate on creating these kind of debris trails that are just going to pop out and for this I want to use a particle emitter so I'm going to go to effects and create some end particles and let's just create an emitter and let's call this trails emitter and let's just leave everything at default So now, let's just say about frame, let's just give him a bit of a run up. So maybe frame 10 is when he actually gets hit. So let's just change our nucleus to start on frame 10. And I'm just going to snap my emitter. I'm thinking let's have it kind of blast from kind of the left area here. We're not going to concentrate on the missile coming in, we're just going to concentrate on the hit itself. So let's just snap our emitter to the side here. I'm just going to constrain it, maybe somewhere around here. So select the chopper. Oops. And select our emitter. And we're going to go constrain, hold down space bar is a little shortcut. Constrain and parent. Let's go to options, make sure maintain offset is on. And all right, so let's just add that. So essentially, if we look through our camera here, it's not going to start until frame 10. And there we go. So let's just change our particles to where we can see them a bit better here. I'm going to change them to spheres and let's just turn the size up to say about two and let's just make a couple of changes in the particles here so first of all my lifespan do a random range say about two and a variation about 0.25 so that's good for now. So the initial emitter, let's just have them blasting out fairly fast for the start. So let's just try something like a speed of 500 and a variance of 250. Let's just make sure to change our emitter to an omni emitter. Now we just wanted to shoot outwards really fast like some debris or something like that that's pretty much what we're looking for so in the initial explosion it's it's all about the timing we really want to have a fast impact that's gonna blast out super fast and then kind of die off in velocity so first I'm gonna key on and off the emission and let's just give it a bit more Let's say 10, 11, it emits for a couple of frames, and then we'll key it off. So let's do a little bit more of a rate. Key that. Now frame 13, let's key it off. So let's see what we get here. Perfect. So also we want to keep in mind what kind of sub-steps we're going to need to sim this at and since we're using particles 
we're going to need to cache out the particle substeps in the particle so we can use those substeps in FEM effects. So if we don't have enough substeps, essentially FEM effects isn't going to be able to use it. So I'm going to use, say, a 0.5 value. So this will give us at least two subsets that we can use in FEM effects, just in case we need it. And that'll just help us with the accuracy and if we get problems with collisions. So kind of being aware of this ahead, the kind of annoying thing with Maya is that every subset you simulate it more or less determines that as a frame and therefore all your emitters, your mission, it's going to calculate on every substep as if it were a real frame. So the rate essentially is going to be double. If we use a 0.5 substep, it's going to emit this every 0.5 frames instead of one frame. And this is just something that Maya does and it's always been kind of frustrating. And the most, most part is when you have forces in here, they're going to evaluate essentially twice as fast on every half a frame. So for one, we're going to, in our particles here, in our dynamic properties, we're just going to have the conserve. We're going to put this to 0.975. And this is going to slow down the particles a little bit over time. It's going to give it a resistance. So if you do it here, we can see it shoots out just towards the end of the frame when we start panning away. But if we go into our settings here and play back by 0.2 and we replay it, we're getting way more particles. It's slowing down way faster. Essentially, it's doing everything five times. So that's just something we all need to be aware of. And we put this back to one. But knowing this, that's fine. We just need to consider that when we go to cache, we're going to cache this out at 0.5 frames. And so really, I want a emission rate of about 300. And I want the conserve. I wanted the value to be at 0.95. But when we're caching out the subframe, it's going to evaluate faster. So I'm going to use a little less conserve. So 0.975. That gives us the values that I was looking for. So there we go. These are going to be some interesting debris trails that are going to be on fire and they'll slowly die off in velocity over time. So there we go. So that's it for our first clip. In the next clip we will set up our fume effects and set off a simple simulation.